So lately I've been thinking about how enlightenment is just the craziest thing that you could ever want. Of all the things in life that you could want, enlightenment is kind of seems abstract and yet it's the simplest thing. Like how dare we think that we could somehow get rid of these tensions of self and other and here and there and all these sort of beliefs caused by us creating this world in which we're a separate part. All of these fears and unmet desires and all these things that we can just be rid of them. What? <laughs> like, of all the things to want, of all the high maintenance desires in the world, like, this one takes cake, people. And I realized that that's exactly the same thing that Jesus was saying in a series of parables about the fish with the net and the pearl of great price. That it's like a pearl merchant who found this incredibly valuable pearl and went and sold everything he had just to buy the one pearl. And so it seems as if we're letting go of all these things and sometimes at earlier stages in the path we believe that it's really about letting go or actually repressing uh, material desires, but really it's, it's, it's scarier and more horrific and more wonderful than that, that it's actually what we think we already have, what we think we inherently are and cannot let go of and yet fear it being taken away to actually voluntarily let go of that in order to have this. It seems like a really crazy thing to want and it feels to me like at this point in time it's really important to have role models that you can look up to and see how they're living and so this has been a hugely important thing for me to have at least one person who I see has like totally all in gone and let go of these things and he has a wonderful happy life and it's we want is maybe of like a survival aspect in us that we want to see somebody living in that way before we give ourselves a permission to do it and so it seems as if at this point in time where generally a lot of people aren't really going for this sort of thing or like they're they're mostly projecting still projecting themselves outward rather than than having ever heard about the possibility that this is even possible like i say it just seems crazy it's hard to get through someone's head that this is actually a possibility and it takes it's such a it, for most people it seems like it's such a process and it seems to destroy everything that we hold ourselves to be and hold dear that it, it just seems absolutely crazy but that's why it seems like there's so many strong personalities and personalities and leadership who have gone through all these things and and maybe some of them have gone through things that, that they thought would make them happy and by process of elimination found this and it's the desire for happiness really always leads here and it's always like like throwing all the other fish out of the net. It's realizing that the desire to be happy is really the root desire of all desires. And so once you hear this, like Nisargadatta Maharaj says, once you hear this, it's like a, it's like a spark or a flame that will consume the whole thing. And once somebody hears this and like the seed that falls on the good soil, it really takes root, then everything that they look for and everything they desire is going to point them here and it's really such a direct desire that it it's like everything <laughs> everything is working out to help you with this and it's um it's also how we stay honest with ourselves like it it's a, a thing to want so when we're honest about what we truly want and when we're really honest about why we want it, that sort of honesty and authenticity about the desire itself ends up sort of like fulfilling itself and taking ourselves here to this place where we realize that dissolving in the sense of here is the key. And so 
I think this is why so many of us like look up to our gurus. We want to see somebody that somebody is okay. We want to see somebody modeling this, but at the same time, we can kind of use it to hold ourselves apart from them. And so when we realize that when we look at any self-realized person in history or in our current experience, that they are embodying and showing this connection with source that we ourselves have and we ourselves can simply uncover, that's the key insight from there. And so they can be people can be incredibly inspiring. And I think that's why so many of us at this point in time where there aren't a lot of people for us, like easily visible people for us to sort of model and observe that so many of us are kind of people who have um, <laughs> defiant or leadership personalities where we have, we've done what we felt like doing and we've kind of gone, always gone that direction in life. And then you kind of uncover that you, you're being a maverick or being a rogue really was this deep wisdom. It wasn't you just throwing caution to the wind. That's kind of how I feel looking back on it. So bringing in examples about how crazy this seems is really key sometimes because it feels like sometimes in the moment is the craziest thing to want. So for example, today my daughter was um, acting up a lot and we were supposed to go visit my parents and she was told not to bring a specific stuffed animal because we were concerned that the specific animal would make her cousin jealous and so she has a really strong will, but she kept, um, she wouldn't take no for an answer. And so we said, okay, you're going to have to stay home then. That's your choice. That's fine. And I kept wanting her to go. I didn't want her to miss out on the whole thing. Like I felt really bad about it. And so I kept trying to get her ready. And so I even brought her out into the car. And when I put her in the car seat, she said again, demanded it. And then she hit me in the face. And at that point, I brought her back in and left her with her father. And so at that point, I started to feel really bad about it, really bad about leaving her, really bad about her missing out. And then I realized <laughs> that awareness comes in and I realized I'm feeling bad about this because I think I'm responsible for her happiness. And Source, or, or love with a capital L, is so good that it gives each of us a connection with feeling. And feeling, and this is the incredible simple thing that Source, God, is so good that we have this, this such a simple basic connection with feeling that when we think something that doesn't feel good, it's not true. It's not aligned with, with the greater good. And so as I'm driving off and I'm feeling terrible about this, I'm feeling responsible for her happiness. And I'm also projecting myself into what she is thinking when really at that point, I have no idea. Likewise, I do this with people who react to me in some certain, in some a circumstance, maybe they don't like how I look, or maybe they don't like what I say. And I think that um, <laughs> it's what I said, when really, in memory, I know that I'm much more forgiving than that. But I still feel responsible sometimes for how people respond to me. And when that feels bad, instead of taking the hint and realizing, oh, Source isn't aligned with this. I'm re I have my own connection with Source. They have their own connection with Source. I'm like, no, I really think this. And I deceive myself that my thought of what they're thinking is what they're thinking and not actually my own original thought. And truly, I have no idea. Even in a situation where it's obvious somebody doesn't like you, you don't know what happened to them that morning or what happened to them as a childhood that could have um, skewed their perspective and their disconnection with source is bringing that up in that moment. And so some of us feel like bad people when we suddenly become 
independent enough and we care about how we feel enough to forget what people are thinking. To, it feels like it's not a compassionate thing to be sad and feel awful for your daughter when she's missing out on playing with her cousins. But when you choose, you have the craziness to choose how you feel and put your own connection above that, it's um, incredibly freeing. Earlier today I was running and I had this intuition to go on this offshoot from the trail and I noticed tree after tree where there was a really large tree that had been cut for firewood and in its place several trees were growing up in its place and it was kind of like this curious thing to me and it made me it reminded me of the parable Jesus talks about where one demon is is left and the house is swept clean and it goes and it finds several more demons to live with it. And I'm not sure exactly what he meant. This comes after the a house divided against itself cannot stand when he was accused of being the devil because he healed somebody. <laughs> and so when you heal somebody and you act out of love, it's a funny thing that sometimes people or even, or more importantly, a thought within yourself is saying, oh no, I'm lacking empathy in this situation. I'm not looking at the reality of this by not choosing to focus on this horrible news story and focusing instead on cat videos and on YouTube, I'm a horrible person and I am lacking empathy. We do that to ourselves, but a house divided against itself cannot stand. And when you cut a tree, several grow back. So you haven't killed the tree. And it's like this when we act out of alignment with source, we try to force something through. So we try to, to um, change ourselves so somebody likes us. We change ourselves so our appearance and what we say doesn't offend them. And then all of these other tensions and problems grow up in its place. And so while this seems like it's the craziest thing you could ever want, it's really going directly to the problem, to the tensions of here and there and self and other and desires and fear and all of that and holding fast to the one because a house divided against itself cannot stand. No duality.